What's up? Welcome to the Tedeschi Trucks Podcast. This is episode number 54, and I am Adam Choit. To follow the show, it's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram, and I'm at Adam Choit on Instagram and Twitter if you want to follow me. And of course, I have no affiliation with the band. This is not an official podcast for them or anything. I am just a fan, and if you're checking out this episode, I'm guessing there's a good chance that you might be too. So please be sure to subscribe and give the show a positive review on iTunes. Doing those things is uh, definitely helpful for sure. So yeah, these days with TTB not on the road and raising money to help their crew, the band has set up a fundraiser page at givebutter.com backslash TTB. I'm sure you all know about this by now. But there's lots of auctions going on and raffles going on. So please also check out Tedeschi Trucks Band Fans uh, private Facebook group uh, or Tedeschi Trucks Band Family and Friends uh, Facebook group. Um, that's where you can find out all the information about all the auctions and raffles going on to help support TTB and their crew. There shouldn't be too much of a process to get uh, accepted into those groups if you are not already a part of them. And of course, I can't say it enough, givebutter.com backslash TTB to support TTB's crew. But uh, for today's episode, which was recorded on a live stream uh, in those groups, I'm joined by photographer and former guest of this podcast, Linda Wolf. Linda, of course, was one of the photographers on the original Mad Dogs and Englishmen tour and was once again at the reunion in 2015 with Leon Russell, Derek and Susan, uh, the rest of TTB and others. Uh, to support uh, TTB's Give Butter Fund, Linda donated a beautiful print uh, of a photo of Derek, Susan, and Leon uh, for a raffle, and we also announce, uh, announced the winner of that raffle during this episode. It was uh, fun to catch up, and Linda has so many great stories from her experiences photographing and interacting with some of our favorite music legends. But let's just get started. Here's Linda Wolf. So it's good to see you today, Linda Wolf. Thank you for uh, joining me on the Zoom for this uh, live stream raffle drawing and podcast recording. That's right. For a very, very beautiful photograph. Oh, for sure. Thank you for, for taking the time. Yeah, the photograph is is amazing. It's a photo of Leon Russell, Susan uh, Tedeschi and Derek, Derek Trucks. Mm -hmm. And I saw what you said about it on, I forget where you said it on your social media comments somewhere saying how it really looks like they're looking into your into your soul i don't know if that was the word you used into your peepers yeah, yeah you could really get off on feeling like you've got them in the room yeah i didn't always think that way about photographs or paintings but i remember this one time i was in what was it the uh what's that museum in la oh you know over the 405 the, the getty or whatever yeah the getty and, and all these paintings were seemed to be these uh portraits were staring at me it seemed like it was it was wild. I think when you're more going through something emotionally or going through something in your life, sometimes art can resonate on a deeper level, even if it's just like paintings, like looking at you and judging you and communicating with you. It's well, they I, I was sober too on this judge you, trip. But hopefully, <laughs> I mean, I do yoga in my studio, and I'll I have like a 24 by 36 inch photo of a portrait of Joe Cocker that stares at me and <laughs> looks me straight in the eyes. And I look up at him, you know, as I'm doing up dog or looking at, looking at him. And I'm like, thank you so much for being in my life. Is that, what is he, what is he thinking with uh, when he's looking at you though? That's well, what you're he thinking. Was, he, he, there's a lot in that photo because, uh, because, because at that time, um, everybody knew that I had a big crush on him. And so we were over at Chris Stanton's house and Gail and Chris had, were just about, you know, they were just gotten pregnant and, um, Chris and Gail were trying to get Joe to be with me. And I, I brought, uh, Jean Millington from Fanny over. And so they were all over that house and everybody was smoking pot and drawing ridiculously erotic things like I wasn't, but they were the guys. And, uh, you know, and, and Joe and I think Joe was embarrassed, you know, and kind of shy. And um, I took him outside <laughs> to photograph him on the deck. And that's where that shot was that I have on my wall. And he I think he's shy and embarrassed and kind of like not knowing how to be with me. And 
um, it was a strange moment because, you know, I just, I had had a crush on Joe throughout the Cocker tour because I just loved him and I totally uh, related to him. I related to his, to a lot of his psychology about his body image. Um, Joe had a similar thing to me in terms of feeling fat and not feeling like, you know, like I, sh- like I should be thinner and things like that. And it really, st- he struggled with that a lot. And I know as a woman, I struggled with that. And so, you know, there were lots of different ways in which uh, I related to Joe um, as a person and, you know, as just, just a person. And so it was kind of funny. So when I look up at him, I, I just, I just think to myself that I'm so grateful that he came into my life, that I came into his life and all that's un- unfurled because of that. Yeah, that's that's amazing. I'm like, I just I'm like thinking of what questions can I ask follow up and I'm listening, but really I'm just enjoying listening to like all these stories and their stories and and, and also anecdotes and tidbits. And it's just amazing to hear all these like behind the scenes stuff and behind the scenes and the stories behind your photos. And I believe that I, I don't know if I've seen this particular photo that you're referring to. Was it in in your in your book? Yeah, it's yeah. A, it's really a, a wonderful just stay right on into the camera photo and um right. And I don't doubt that you were able to capture those the stories behind the, you know, that photo and 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 whatnot. Like just looking at all your past photos, you could really capture the human the human side of of the human side of people. <laughs> I I'm I'm being very uh profound right now. Well, thank you. The reality is for me that that all these people I photograph, like I'm going to do one of these photographs of um, of Warren for this auction, Warren Haynes, and they're all people that I want to know as people. You know, so Warren and I became friends as people, and that's a whole different thing from taking pictures, you know, of people that you don't know very well, you don't have a relationship with. And most of my photographs are people that I have relationship with. Yeah, that's that's great. And that makes me think about like just talking to a bunch of people, including yourself, photographers who've um, worked with Susan and Derek and talking about like, you know, earning their respect and trust and being respectful of them. And I think, people, you know, photographers have mentioned that, you know, not just giving you more access per se, just leads to better fo- fo- photographs like and, and better better art like when there's that good solid relationship and respect between the musician and the and the photographer right well it's not it's not really a lot of fun to just be taking like pictures of people that are just standing there that you hardly know i mean i don't even want to do a portrait sitting of anybody you know that just would come out of the blue and call me from the phone book without spending time with them and, and, and not honestly being human together and finding our common humanity and finding where we connect or don't connect. I mean, I certainly don't want to photograph somebody I don't connect with. You know what I mean? I mean, I wouldn't want to be photographed by someone who didn't connect with me. I feel the same way about my dentist. You have to we capture know each other. You have to capture in that case, you have to capture the, the awkward disjointedness in the photograph. Because that will when represent. You don't know somebody. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm kind yeah. of joking around. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I I have some really interesting stories for you that are that are silly stories. Because like one time, you're probably not interested in this right now. Because no, I, I am. I I am. But we will we will get to the to the raffle, and we and we could talk. We should definitely talk more about the Susan Derrick and and Leon photo and and, and the stories behind that. But yeah, to give us give us some well, stories. Lately, I have. Well, I've just become a grandma. Oh, congratulations. Yes, I've seen, I've seen the images on the social media. Thank you. You're, you, you seem to be enjoying it. I never expected to fall in love again in my life like this. And it's incredible. But what it's done for me is it's um, like I want to be there all the time. I want to be with my grandson all the time and my, grand, and my daughter and has, all my family. Is, is that what being in love is? It's more, about, it's more about the feeling for another person or persons is that, or something like that? Why he, he's not in love with me yet, but he's learning. <laughs> well, we don't know <laughs> that. I'm in love we don't. With him. Maybe on some level, he's he's that that love is growing. Well, if he I, feels if I may. it. 
he feels it from me, I'm sure, because that's what we are as feeling beings. But long story short. Yeah, I'll let you get to it. Because you and I could go off on a million tangents. I think so. Is that I started writing because I I needed an outlet. And so I've been doing this Substack writing at lindawolf.substack.com. And it's my, well, I'm doing two of them. One's called Linda Wolf substack.com and that's about my life as a rock and roll photographer and so i'm just like telling all kinds of stories that I'm, i keep asking my husband you think this is okay if i put this out there i mean i'm not so sure why am i doing this this is crazy i don't want to but i've been doing it and uh finding my voice in that respect but then i also did another substack called um being a human which is about life and death and everything else because i'm going i'm living through my mother who's on her way out and the son who's on his way in and myself in between and toward the end. And I mean, it's like, what a mess. It's so, life, life, <laughs> life. So that one's different, but anyway, so I don't, I don't need to tell you the story I was going to tell you, but you can keep going on. No, that's, that's, that's exciting. That's fun. That seems like a good outlook for you. Do you have plans to turn, turn these writings into anything, a long form, a book or, or something? I, or? I have no idea. I'm really just giving it a shot. I, I always thought, you know, I've had people tell me a million times, you should do a memoir. You should do a memoir. Right. I, I think I told, I think I was one of those people. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm just seeing how it feels. See, my husband, he, he started a memoir, which is called it's tough being a feminist sexist pig. And He's not a fem- he's not a sexist pig, but it's tough being a feminist sexist pig. And it's hilarious, but he doesn't want to put it out. Yeah. I think because you guys are go- too, yeah, go on. It's too vulnerable. Right. Well, it's everyone's got their own goals and intentions with their writing and what they want to what they want to get out of it, I I guess. I mean, you guys are going about it the right way cuz I feel like, you know, t- talking to friends and whatnot like and people wanting to start new ventures and creative endeavors, like people go try, think you have to go from zero to a hundred. It's like, Oh, I'm not going to do this. Okay. Now I'm going to write a book. It's like, no, you can write a few sentences, write a blog and then see how that feels and let things grow organically. You don't have to make these giant commitments. You can take smaller steps to see if, if something's, uh, something's right for you. But uh, what what else you got? Did you have other stories that you wanted to? Because you had it seemed like a couple of well, things. Well, no, were, I, you were talking okay. to me about being a photographer and and photographing people I don't know and how awkward that is. And I was just going to tell you that one time I had to photograph like I don't know maybe six or seven famous chefs because they were all cooking for the the um, cuisine writer at the L.A. Times and he was getting married. So he hired me to be his wedding photographer. And I went into the kitchen and I, I stood up on one of the tables because they were all cooking at the same time, you know, um, Wolfgang Puck and all these other people. And I kept going, hey, guys, um, can you just look up here for a second? <laughs> oh, no, they what probably we, they probably freaked out. That- and these are like all these famous chefs. And finally, I just threw my top off. <laughs> So I had nothing on the top of me. And I said, look up here. Wow. <laughs> they all went like this. And I caught the picture of them also. Wow. Is that to, that's a true story? Nudity. <laughs> wow. Is that a, that's a true story? Yeah. Wow. When when was this? When I was younger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's wow. Did they teach that in photography school? What? <laughs> that, 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 this, this, this. no they don't teach you that but i was desperate yeah i That's... wanted the shot for this guy because he was so nice and his wife was so nice and he's like the head writer of you know cooking and stuff very famous guy i don't know and worked for the la times and um so i just you know listen sometimes you have to do things to get a shot with people you don't know is that is that something that you had you kind of i guess Maybe as a female, it's like I always have this in the back pocket if I need to get something done. Is that what it is? Because it's like that's well, a, where does that even come from? To think well, it comes from that. Lucille Ball. She never did. That makes yeah. <laughs> that's like you know, it was a Lucille Ball moment, right? That she right. wouldn't have done, but I went a little further. I stood on her shoulders. Yeah, I remember Drew Barrymore and on David Letterman's birthday. That was a that was a famous one. Oh, what was that about? 
uh, that's similar similar what you're describing a, oh. surpri- a surprise for for people oh. <laughs> i'll just i'll just say say that but why don't we get back into music and photography and and you can okay. tell me more about the uh just tell me more about the susan derrick and and leon print the story behind that and you could kind of okay definitely recap how you got connected with uh with Derek and Susan and the, the, okay. uh, the reunion. Okay. Of course you were on the original, uh, if anyone doesn't know, you were on the original Joe Cocker and the Mad Dogs and Englishman mentor. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And I didn't have to do anything to get on that tour too. I got just smooth in no nude pictures. Nothing. Oh, I see. I was like, what's she talking about? She's the photographer. <laughs> like I got you now. Um, so let's see the picture with Leon. The thing is that that was a very, um, that was a very embarrassing moment in some ways for me because Leon teases, he likes to, you know, Leon doesn't talk too much, but when he does, he teases a bit and he and I have had a, an interesting relationship during the tour and before the tour and after the tour and, uh, you know, with all kinds of different things that ha- took place. And when I first arrived at um, the tribute concert, uh, he said to me some of his first words. Well, first, I, I apologized to him for something that happened a long time ago. And <laughs> you guys are funny. It. And then <clears throat> he, he said to me, I, I walked up to him in the, re- in the rehearsal room in the carriage house and, and, uh, I said, hi, Leon. And he said, he goes, I was bad, wasn't I? I was really bad. And I was like, no, Leon, you you weren't at all bad. No, no, not at all, Leon. I mean, I didn't know what to say to him. I wasn't sure what he meant. He was bad. Which way was he bad? He he may have meant in more ways than one. Maybe he did. But um, so so then I was like, you know, trying to calm him down and tell him, no, no, you know, contradict him. You were great, Leon. But um, so I was kind of kissing up in a way. But anyway, <clears throat> life went on and the rehearsal went on and at, and I was photographing, you know, I had free reign, which is the way that it always has been. And so I was, you know, taking lots of pictures of, of Leon and, and everybody and weaving through the rehearsal and nobody seemed to mind and it was all happening really great. And then suddenly. uh they decide they're going to take a break. And I said, yeah, man, you guys, you know, get together. Let, let me take a picture of, of you guys together. Cause they, cause already Derek was talking with Leon. So I already had started having photographs of Derek and Leon chatting together. It was like the first time they were chat, chat, chatting on the first day of the rehearsal. And then Susan came up behind him. So I've got pictures of Susan holding Derek from, from behind and kind of like wanting to get in there and talk to and then she moved around and she started getting so now I had the three of them together and suddenly Leon pointed at me and they were all being real sweet to me already so their smiles are all very very friendly but Leon's pointing at me and he's like he said something I can't remember what it was but it was a tease like don't let her photograph you you know yeah if you capture that what? You ca- I was gonna say you capture that. Yep. And he literally, it literally, it was like, but that wasn't the only time he teased me. Say what, say what you say, what you said again. I was, I, I, I talked over, you said, you said, it sounded like he said, don't you laugh or something like that. You were, he said, no, don't you let, don't let her take your picture. Or he said something like this. Yeah. You know, he's like, messing with like, you. Yeah. Like, or watch out for that one. Or, you know, and I'm like, Leon, <laughs> Because he teased me endlessly. And I have to say, I want I need to say this because it, it it helps. He teased me other times. He teased my daughter too. And um and then at the end when he was leaving and it was all done and everybody was leaving, I had had enough of it. And I walked up to him and I said, and I started like t- tears started falling from my eyes. And I was oh, like, no. Leon. You know, I would never do, da, 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 which is something that he teased me about. And on top of that, it really hurts my feelings that you tease me so much. And he said, Linda, he goes with his accent. Let's see if I can do it. Linda, 
you've got one leg longer than the other. <laughs> and I realized he meant that he could pull it. Oh, yeah. Pull took, my leg. That's what, that, that is what I was going to say is that you, he knows that he can get to you very easily and he enjoy it's, it's, it's a, I don't want to say toxic. It's just fun. It's just that, 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 that you guys have that dynamic where you're sensitive and he preys on the sensitive, even if mostly in a playful way. Oh, yeah. He was always playful. I mean, all the time, he never did anything mean. I mean, and I knew Derek and Susan in that photograph knew he was joking and um, you know, I mean, I've continued to photograph him and be in his face, <laughs> you know, talk to him and, you know, and talk to his wife and him asking me for help and for his wife with CBD oil or something like that. So, you know, we're, we were, we were comrade, you know, we, we had a camaraderie, no, that's camaraderie, great. camaraderie. Yeah. But, but, but it did hurt my feelings. Cause you know, I was one of the youngest people on that tour and, um, and I wasn't used to all of that. I wasn't used to any of it. Right. You so, were, Right, exactly. And I don't have the, I should have the photo in front of me. I don't have it up right now, but just thinking more about it, how, you know, Leon's teasing and Susan's sort of excited to be photographed and she's always very photogenic and into, and has no problem with it and is enthusiastic about it. And Derek is just like, um, he's just chill. Basically. He's like, he's like, he's just he's yeah, well, un unfazed, unfazed. He's unfazed. She's enthusiastic and he's yeah. amazing. And that, does that not capture like it, them really their essence in many ways? Yeah, totally. And Derek, Derek is so, they're so loving and they're still so loving to me. And they were so loving to us, my daughters and I, and, um, and I knew that they really liked me. So it wasn't about that. It was really nice to, to be in that moment with them all. And in actuality, it's an incredibly um, powerful thing to be recognized that way as a photographer, taking a picture of three extraordinary people, having them just recognize me in that way. And, and, and that's what comes through is this, this feeling that, um, that people will have when they put the photo on their wall, that they're being seen. They're right. Being, that's kind of like what we were talking about earlier, even yeah. like really. Yeah. Yeah. I just got grown, have such a deeper appreciation for photography. Like now just talk, talking to, you know, photographers and mm -hmm. from this podcast and just uh, on many, on many levels, a deeper, le especially for uh, music, music photography, obviously like just mm -hmm. appreciative on a deeper level. And, and the, and a more, uh, more of a respect for the power of, of these images, like how that is like a real thing. Like you're, you seeing that Joe Cocker photo every morning, like, and it giving you a certain feeling and that affects how you behave in your day and what your mood is like, this is all like, this is real shit. Like, I don't know what, you know, how else to phrase it. That's, it's like this, you well, know, the, en the energy and the art is, is impactful in our daily lives yeah and 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 um a lot of times photographers it's it's a it's a paradox because photographers don't want to be seen and do want to be seen and can be ignored and don't want to be ignored so it's it's you know want to be ignored and don't want to be ignored because you don't want to get in the way but it, and you want to capture what's really there and really happening uh, without people putting on a show or a face and um get get underneath you know get really get into them and uh and then at the same time you know it's like i'm a person and i want to be recognized so it's 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 there's there's a moment you know there's like a time and place for everything which is why the relationships are so important um there's a documentary movie coming out about the all girl rock band. I worked with Fanny and uh, it's called the um, Fanny, the right to rock, like the right to vote, the right to rock. Cause they're, they were, you know, this it's taken a long time for women to be recognized. Well, it's the same with photographers. I think it's sometimes hard for, for, for people to recognize photographers have the value of photographers in their lives. Right. I'm an example of that. Not that I, I've always been appreciative for photography, but like you could become even more. You, there's no limit 
there's no limit to like gratitude and appreciation. That's like something that I'm like learning. Like you can be an appreciative person, a person who enjoys art, but with each passing month, day, whatever year, like you can become, you know, even more, I can maybe not serious, but like, you know, just more, more with a more, more gratitude. And more, Are you, you know? saying that you yourself, like I can become deeper? All of us, all of us, human humanity. Yes. It's an uphill battle, I suppose, for some of us, for no. some more than others. No, Adam, you're, you very well could jump into the depth pool. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm deep. I'm deep enough. But why don't we, uh, wh- I mean, let's, why don't, should we do the drawing? Why don't we do the drawing now? And then okay. we could talk a little bit more, more about the, the shows with Derek, Susan, and Leon, because I'm sure you got some more stories and things you could share. So I got it right here. Okay. So I'm so I'm shuffling. I'll I'll, I'll I should do this quick because this is actually kind of more of a visual. Go. Thing. All right, here we go. Oh, you want me to pick it here? So I got a bowl of raffle tickets here. You can hear the one them on wrestling. the left. The left. Okay. All right. Deeper. Deeper. I got, I got one here. <laughs> uh, the number is four nine nine zero nine two. Four nine nine zero nine two. Uh, Tammy in the chat here is saying that the name is actually on the back of the ticket. Oh. And the winner is Glenn Cordova. Glenn Cordova? Is the winner of the of the print. So you congratulations. Got, that's fantastic. 499092. I wonder if I know this man. I see I've seen him in the in on social media, the name for sure. I we probably have interacted for all I know. But why don't you tell me more about um about a more you have more teasing stories by any chance? Oh yes, I do. Leon teasing <laughs> stories. So um, Miss, I hope I can get this one right. But uh, Heather found her because there were these two at the at the at the lock in concert. There were these two backstage areas. Heather's was, your daughter, huh? Yeah, Heather's my daughter. Yeah. She, all three daughters were invited to come with me by lock in. It was so sweet. They just welcomed them all and covered their costs and everything. Um. So Heather was my assistant and she, she went into the men's dressing room. There were two dressing rooms, one for the women, one for the men. And she, somehow she got into the men's dressing room and she sat down with Derek and Leon. And she, now mind you, she's young, you know, so this wasn't her music back in the day. And she doesn't, you know, she was just learning about who, Leon is and who Derek is, but she had come prepared because um, her ex-father-in-law had told her that he loved the wedding album that Leon made with Mary, his wife. And uh, so, so she didn't know what to say because she was, you know, she's with Leon and Derek and they're talking and chit-chatting and she's just sort of sitting there feeling uncomfortable And um, finally, there was a lull in the conversation. And she said, oh, Leon, I just want to tell you that my father-in-law at the time, my father-in-law loves your wedding album. And my daughter gets embarrassed easily. And so all of a sudden, Leon turns to her and he looks at her and he goes, that woman, that woman broke up with me twice and left me a freezer, uh, left me a dead freezer full of fish. <laughs> wow. My daughter's like, oh, I'm really sorry for mentioning that, you know, but he went on to say uh, something to the effect of, um, and I learned how to write a song uh, Derek would probably remember this. I learned how to write a song from a book, but I won't tell you. <laughs> and he points at poor Heather. And she's like, she's like, no, I, my God, I've said the wrong thing. And now he's like, she didn't know what to say. He's a character. He sounds he's like a, a character. Re- sounds like a real character. And is, is he someone who like, I've, I'm guessing he had a lot of, he had some ups and downs and whatnot throughout his his life and, and journey and musical journey. But he seems like someone who's like proud and takes pride in like all of his experiences. And even I think part of him enjoys 
even sharing the experiences that were not so not his favorite experiences. It's still like part of who he is and he enjoys sharing that. Is that something you think is true about Leon or was true? Well, I think that may have been true um, by, you know, when he was alive. So yeah, later on, but, um, but recently I don't know what he's doing. What a character. <laughs> I've been in, in another time and place or whatever. And, oh. Joe and a bunch of others are playing music somewhere and, I hope so. I used to like, I don't know. I really genuinely hope, hope so. Like I'm not super confident in, in in the afterlife looking that, um, that amazing if there is such, such a thing, but like, I hope so. That would be awesome. Yeah, it would be. I, I hear there's some real nice older age retreat centers in New York for people in the music industry or entertainment yeah. industry. And you can go and be real old and, creaky and play a lot of music together that sounds really good actually the but the, yeah but the, the afterlife you're not the af- yeah the afterlife you're not as certain of though the afterlife i think <laughs> i think i may play the music of the spheres oh yeah what's what is that the music of the spheres is, oh spheres yeah the spheres the music of the spheres universal music Oh, okay. I see. I th- I think I see where we're going. But uh, <laughs> what else? What are, maybe have some other highlights from uh, Susan, Derek, Leon, Mad Dogs. The well, okay. So the end. Um, so let's see other highlights. Uh, I oh, I was really tired at one point on the tour that we were on the next year, and I told Susan I was exhausted, and so she said, "Well, you should get into my bunk." So she put me in her bunk on the, on the truck, the tra- the, the van, the, 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 you know, the tour, the tour bus. bus. Yeah. The I took me bus. a second too, for some reason. Yeah. She, t- she said, go on in there and, and just take a nap. Just, just enjoy yourself. So I go into this little cave, the Susan cave in her um, tour bus. And I, I, all of a sudden I realized I'm in Susan Tedeschi's bed. <laughs> You know? And I was looking around at everything and kind of like I, not wanting to fall asleep at that point. Suddenly I wasn't tired anymore. I was like very curious as to this is where she lives a lot of the time and what's in here. And it was just very interesting to me. Yeah, you're you're a curious. I mean, you're definitely a curious person. And like was, was you were being curious, like with your eyes, which is like an extension, I feel like, of like being a curious photographer that all kind of like i bet feeds into to one thing like just being curious when you're looking around even when you don't have your camera on you even well yeah but i was getting to know her on a much deeper level at that point you know because this is her little space and so but she'd closed the the curtains and um then i hear these pitter patters on the floor and all of a sudden the curtain opens and it's alicia (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> she looks in and she sees me in in Susan's bed or her cubby hole or whatever it's called. And uh, she was just like, whoa. And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. Susan put me in here to fall asleep. But she was so surprised to find me in the bed rather than Susan in there. Yeah. So, yeah. Makes, but anyways, makes sense. So then, so then um, Kofi came in and Kofi and I had become friends and he started sharing with me. Yeah. Susan sleeps here. I, and I sleep here and Derek sleeps here. And it was interesting to me to discover that Kofi and Derek slept across from each other, yeah, like, like in the bus. And Susan was behind Derek in the bus next to, I'm not sure whom, but uh, yeah. So that was, that was fascinating. Yeah, the um, real the real behind the scenes stuff. I remember one. I forget what some video that I forget what it was even from, but I remember seeing that there were like a guitar slides all over the place. Is that something you saw around the bus? The guitar slides rolling down the the aisles or something like that. No, was- I didn't see that, but I saw <laughs> I saw Susan was very much the the maternal person in the bus. She I she always- treated yeah the way she's treating you for one thing. Well, yeah, and she was always the one to clean the counters, you know, after everybody and um, make sure everybody had whatever they wanted and needed. She she was just the mother, the very mother of the whole group. Yes, that was a lot of fun. 
Why yeah, that, else? yes. Is that me or you? I think that's that's you. Is that me? It's I don't know. <laughs> it's all good. It's probably a daughter. Yeah, she must. Have, Susan must enjoy. I think she takes pride in and in, in in being that type of leader for as well. I mean, mm-hmm. she, is is would you say that maybe Derek is the leader on stage and she's the leader off stage? Just to. To some degree, I don't really know. Maybe um, she sure she sure is, and uh, they both are absolutely just the most beautiful people. I mean, I, I I can't think of two people in the music industry except maybe Warren Haynes, who I've also gotten close with, um, who and of course my friends from Fanny, but um, just beautiful people, really lovely people. That's what everyone says who I've spoken to who's come across them and the band in some capacity has only positive things and just way beyond uh, positive things to say about them. And I think that's great that those counters are clean, that Susan uh, stays on top of that. That's that's I'm glad that the the bus on the inside and outside is always is always sparkling. The bus drivers are so sweet. Um, Bobby Bolton. Uh, I, I'll tell you one more story that is that sure. kind of embarrasses me a bit, but it's OK. They were so <laughs> kind to me and to my daughters. And we became really sweet friends. And like I just I mean, just just as an example, I sent a, 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 I texted Derek and Susan a video of my daughter, Heather, with one of her new songs that she put out. And it's a video. Um, and, um, and he actually he just. He just wrote her a text and said, I love every bit of this. Wow. And I thought that is so sweet. You know, and also another person, very sweet and really, really amazing person I love is um, Doyle. And I never knew. I never expected to. Doyle Bramhall. Yeah. I didn't think I'd like him. I thought he was going to be real Hollywood or something when before I met him because he's so cute, you know, and he's so I don't know, beautiful and, and, and kind of hip and everything. And, but he's turned out to be another one of those real people that, that I can be a real person with and talk about real things and be, have real relationship with our whole family can, I love him dearly. And uh, who else? Let's see. So anyway, okay. So the thing I did, okay. So we went on tour with Derek and Susan, my daughters and I, the year after lock-in. And um, so one day I was going to yoga prior to this, to us going on tour and I got stoned before I went to the yoga class, which I, I didn't do that often, but I just, I don't know. I felt like smoking a little pot before I went into the yoga class. So I was in the yoga class and at a certain point we were doing Shavasana do you know what Shavasana is? It's funny because I, I think you told me, but I, I forgot. <laughs> oh, did I tell you this story before? No, you well, maybe. Oh, okay. Uh, no, but it, not everyone has heard it. And it was, oh, I, I remember. I remember what, I remember where this is going, but keep, keep going. All right. So anyway, I was doing Shavasana and they were the, um, which is where you're just flat out and you're just relaxing after yoga. And, I, and so this woman put a, an eye pillow over me. And I was laying there thinking, oh, I'm about to go on tour with the band. And, you know, these eye pillows are really wonderful. (laughs) I think that I should ask my friend who runs the yoga studio if I could buy. Well, I'd have to get one for everybody, including the bus drivers and the sound men, (laughs) because they all need these. I thought they really need these. So I went to I got my friend to do a um, wholesale purchase of, I don't know, 40 eye pillows. <laughs> and when we went on tour, I handed them out to everybody. They really appreciated them. Some of them like, like Ephraim, he said he, he used them for years. Yeah. I was going to say that, like, if you're, if there's like 25, 30 people and you're giving these eye pillows out to all of them and you think, think and speak this highly of them, there's a good chance that someone on the F from what it sounds like, and who knows who else, like really is going to use them and, and did and that's, that, yeah, that makes it worth it. If one person to me, I, I, maybe this, I don't know if this is your sentiment or thought, but like if one person really, really loves it and, and gets use out of it, like it's kind of worth it. Cause a lot of it is obviously just, it's a nice gesture and 
and whatnot. But uh, it's, that's awesome that people. Uh, I was like so them. embarrassed because when I, of course, when I, I got them and put them in the trunk of my car I and mean, we went to, I guess the first stop was Victoria or Vancouver or someplace like that. And I, I kept saying to the girls, should I really give them to them? Should I really do this? But we were already giving them, Heather is a brewist and she was giving them kvass and kombucha and um, uh, we gave them all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I'm sure you guys aren't the only people give them back. Right. right. I'm sure you guys aren't. Exactly. I'm sure you guys are not the only the only people that have worked with for or fans over the years who've given gifts, you know, to to, to the band. Yeah, I should give them something. I gave I give them this podcast now that I think about it. That's that's my give them a lot. I suppose maybe, (laughs) maybe, maybe. And and also supporting uh, uh, give butter dot com backslash TTB, of course. Um, I really appreciate your time and all the stories and for donating the photo and for for and everyone else and, and who's helped you know, organize the raffles and raise money for givebutter.com backslash TTB. I'll give you the floor to talk about anything else you want to. Otherwise, feel f- feel free to plug and promote, you know, whatever you're working on, your sub stack, your social media, your photography. And uh, I'll let you uh, enjoy the rest of your evening, but uh, I'll give you the floor now to, to kind of oh, do Oh, thank you. Well, I wanted to let you know that, we, that we're that we going to have another raffle and Warren has, uh, Warren Haynes has, um, t- is totally cool. I'm going to send the photo off to him. Uh, I know that this, it'll be posted so everyone will know what the picture is. It's a, It'll be a portrait of him, something that I've done. And uh i'm gonna send it off to him and then he's gonna sign it to whoever wins it oh with their yeah that's personally signed and then it'll come back to julie and or tammy and will um be sent out to whoever whoever won it and it'll be a personal he's he's done things for me for my nonprofit where he's um given his like done his his voice on a phone machine for somebody like, hi, this is so-and-so, this is Warren Haynes, and I'm answering the phone for Adam. <laughs> so he's really just been super generous. And this one, he's too, super generous again. That's great. That's mm-hmm. that's exciting. And I can't wait to to follow this, this, this one. And uh and hopefully it continues to more money continues to come in and help the help the band and the crew for sure. As you know, they haven't quite got back on the, the road yet uh, at full force, but why don't you tell people where they can find and follow you and, and anything else? Uh, well, um, if you would like an adventure in my, my skull and heart, uh, you can read what I'm writing these days on Substack, lindawolf.substack.com. And or just go to my Facebook page. Um, I'm really, I've got to show up at our local museum on the uh, immigrants that I photographed in in Mexico City back in 2018, the famous caravan of immigrants coming to the U.S. There's a show up called Breathe at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art. And it's, it's, it's powerful. It's really powerful. It's, it's a group show. Um, and, uh, but basically, you know what, Adam, I mean, I'm really just hanging out, taking care of my mom and being a grandma these days. You're doing it all. So that's that's really my focus. If anybody wants to talk about being a grandma or, I mean, it's the first time I'm really flipped out. I love it. I don't know what I'm going to do with the rest of my life, but you're doing it. Are you, what do you mean? You don't know. I think you are doing it right now. It's happening as you, as you would like to say, it's, it's happening. happening. It's all happening. I did listen to a little bit of the, the previous episode. So I'm, I'm it's, a, it's a little bit fresh, the happening. Some, sometimes people should go on my Facebook page because I get up in the morning very often. And I want to just hang out with people. And because of, you know, COVID and everything, we're all isolated still. And uh, so I'll just do a live facebook thing called welcome to my house or welcome to my kitchen or welcome to my bedroom that kind of thing and it's fun i just want to be i just want to be connected and uh, that's the uh, word i was going to use connect connecting and connecting yeah, yeah. For sure. 
but thank you so much for having me. Oh, for um, sure. Of I course. I appreciate it very much. And I'm really glad for Glenn that he got the, the photograph. And I, I love being part of TTB and so grateful to Julie and to Tammy and to you um, for doing this for them. It's, it's a gift, a real gift. And we all thank you and, and appreciate it for, for sure. Linda Wolf Photography, Google her, find her. I'm sure you'll find all that butter.com backslash ttb uh, i think i think we did it i think we recorded a podcast yay so there you go episode 54 with linda wolf that was a lot of fun and i again thank linda for the time i could really listen to her tell stories all day just the way she talks about joe cocker uh using his first name makes me really feel like i'm getting to know him on a deeper level which is cool anyway GiveButter.com backslash TTB, of course, to support TTB's crew and to follow all the auctions and raffles going on. Tedeschi Trucks Band Fans or Tedeschi Trucks Band Family and Friends uh, Facebook groups. Um, anyway, for now, just hope everyone is doing okay out there. And please check out Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram. That's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast. And of course, remember to tap subscribe or follow on iTunes, Spotify, or via whichever way you listen to this show. And again, positive reviews on iTunes are greatly appreciated. And I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Adam Choit. Uh, the band, Tedeschi Trucks Band, is at TedeschiTrucksBand.com. And one more time, GiveButter.com backslash TTB to support the band and crew. But uh, yeah, I think that's about all I got for today. I appreciate you guys listening. Uh, thanks again. Later. <laughs>